Good morning. Good morning. It's only 30 below. <laughs> but hey, we're warm inside. Yeah, we're coordinated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the inside. In the inside. Oh, welcome to Holy Spirit Sand Sunday. Sunday morning, declare his glory. Yes. And it's an interesting month. You know, the Hebraic month of Shavet is an interesting month. It's the 11th month. And it's also a, a, a month of great joy and praise. It, it's all about joy and praise. The 11th month, uh, you know, it, it, uh, it comes before the 12th month. Wow. I bet you that's a revelation. You know, you know, I bet so right I'm going to say something end. very, very profound here. Um, you know, uh, in, the, in the 11th month, it, it, you know, you ever heard about the 11th hour? Well, this is the 11th month. Mm. And uh, one of the things that's very important in the 11th hour mm -hmm. or the 11th month is to finish well. Yes. Is to finish well. And uh, so that was kind of my segue here. Okay. Moving in. It's, it's important to finish well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you start. Right. It's a matter where you're finishing well. In the 11th hour, 11th month. And in uh, Zephaniah chapter 3, it, it's, it's uh, oh, you don't have your computer, but that. Uh, well, I didn't bring it. It's okay. Here, but it's, it talks about the joy of God's faithfulness, and uh, we experienced that yesterday at uh, the funeral of. Uh, mm -hmm. The celebration. Of, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, Cody and Leanne Campbell's uh, young lad. 14. Um, it has turned this community upside down. Yeah. We uh, we would have to say, but when we were sitting in the in the community hall, there was such a heaviness of despair, mm -hmm. and it was quite interesting. Liz and I sitting there. There must have been four or five hundred people sitting in there. Easy. 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 And then they had the overflow into the school that they were, the were in the gymnasium. Yeah, pretty So we're, lo we're looking at the four to 500 people in there, and I'm saying, Leslie, how many of these people do you know? Not that many. I, I, I don't think we knew 10%. No. It's a whole new generation. Mm -hmm. But they were in despair. So. My point being is uh, there's a great opportunity here, 11th hour, 11th month, whatever it may be, for the spirit of the living God to come down upon this community and many be saved alive. Yeah. Many be saved alive. So, uh, but in that, I think the oil of joy, it, it talks about that in uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 3. It says the oil of joy. It is a really good remedy for the spirit of despair. Mm -hmm. And I come against the spirit of despair over this community mm -hmm. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we, we speak joy, we speak uh, promise, the promises of God. And uh, Xander, who uh, um, Cody and you know, it, it was a hard day for for them in the end, and all the family and and the issues. I don't want to get into all the issues, but pray praise God that um, the the pastor of the United Church stood up, regardless of religious positions, and stood up for heaven and stood up for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She proclaimed that at the beginning. Yeah. What boldness is necessary in the eleventh hour? Mm -hmm. Here you here you've got uh, seven hundred to a thousand people, and the first thing that she says from the podium, saying that based on the whatever it is of the United Church, based on suicide. <clears throat> The family went out and asked theologians in the area <laughs> whether Xander was going to heaven or not, not based on the 
theology of this religion. So they chose to say that Xander is in heaven and with Jesus, not the position of this church. And then she said, and not my position either. Oh, amen. Oh. Yes. So praise God. Praise the Lord. I yeah. thank the Lord for that young woman. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That would stand up like that. We need more boldness like that in the body of Christ throughout. Regardless of what the nomination speaks or what, what, or, or what the issues are, she says that young man is in heaven. So you, the 11th hour, the 11th month, always finish well. And Xander did because, uh, uh, oh golly, a number of months ago he came by and, with Cody. And uh, we had the opportunity to speak about a lot of things, and Cody brought him over, and I talked about missions, talked about all the different things that were important, and he was all excited about that. And I said, I said, so have you given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, no. So can I explain this to you? And he said, yes. So I explained it. And I, I, and I says, what do you think about that? He says, oh, that's, that's interesting. I says, your dad's given your heart, his heart to the Lord. Why don't you pray with him? And he did. So always be ready. 11th hour, 11th day. And always be ready with the left hand of mercy. The month of Shavet is all about the left hand of mercy and reaching out in joy. And I thank the Lord that Xander's in heaven. I thank the Lord that Cody um, had no problem in front of so many people that we did not know saying, I am so happy that Xander got to know you before we went home to heaven. I, I pray that we all have that same opportunity. Yeah. That we can be there. You, you, you don't know when you have to sh be in a place to share the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to a young person or a child, especially when the parents come over and, and, and uh, maybe just don't have the words, but maybe you can help give the words and then bridge it in and then they have no problem. So I pray right now, wherever you are, don't hold back. Because this, this is the month. This, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made for you as we come to worship in spirit and truth. So, again, this month is all about joy and God's faithfulness. And, you know, <laughs> I can just tell you that was not a united church Typical uh, thing that happened. It was they had wonderful worship. Jesus's name was mentioned quite a bit, and they had songs with Jesus's name in it. Praise the Lord for that pastor, Reverend Emma. Praise the Lord that they did not hold back based on tradition or doctrine or religion. But they, they chose to stand and be in heaven and in truth. So it says here in uh, Zephaniah chapter uh, 3, verses 14 to 19, and, I, and I'm speaking this over our communities here in Carberry, Sydney, Brandon, whole West Man area. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart. O daughter of Jerusalem, the Lord has taken away your judgments. He has cast out your enemy. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear. Do not fear. Wow. Zion, let not your hands be weak. Zion, 
Those who are worshipers, Zion is the, is the seventh mountain of all the mountains in Jerusalem. It's the smallest of the seven, but Mount Zion is, is the mountain of worship. That's where David went. He says, do not let your hands be weak. Left hand of mercy, right hand of authority. In Jesus' name, mercy and authority. And the Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one will, the mighty one will save the mighty one will save. For all those out there that don't know the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the mighty one will save. And he is pressing his love, his joy upon your heart right now. And he, and he will rejoice over you with gladness. He, he, he will quiet you, pardon me. He will quiet you with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing. He will rejoice over you with singing. And as we go into worship in spirit and truth, I just thank the Lord that the oil of joy, the oil of joy is for coming against that spirit of despair. And we, wherever that may be, whatever home, whatever nation, wherever there is here, we say no, we say the oil of joy will be poured out and soak you in the oil of joy. For the spirit of heaviness and despair. You got something? I'll have lots later. You got lots later? Okay. Yeah, we just yeah, just it's like we are we are here to honor the king. We are here to honor the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. And our purpose in life is to worship him. Amen. And so we've come and we're gathering together to worship him, the great I am. We're here to worship the King, to bring glory and honor to His name, and we declare that His glory, His glory is already filling, filling the earth, even as the waters cover the sea. So it is already filling the earth, and that we will tap into who the glory is, and that is the King. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that you would dare, that you would dare to, to entrust the gift of your Son, the blood of the Lord God Almighty, the blood of Jesus, that you would entrust him and all that you called for him to be, his purposes now to come and, and with us, that we, would, that we would carry his purpose beyond, beyond ourselves. Amen. Bringing glory to your name in Jesus' name. Bruce and Cheryl, let's worship the King. Yeah. And Brock. Yeah. And Brock. Thank you. I got a thumper stick. <laughs> what you going to do with that? I don't know. Yeah. I'll be in rhythm. <laughs> Laws, Leslie prayed, we are here to worship Jesus, the King Amen. of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Just invite you to enter in with us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, we 
salvation and justice. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. We bow before the King over all. The Lord's resounding voice thunders the water and all consuming fire in the hand of
what it looked like to be a book, like an ancient book. And there was a lot of dirt and debris on this, this book. And I felt it had to do with promises that have been laid down or set aside. Or maybe even uh, the word that he spoke over your life that has been shelved. <laughs> and I felt that he really wanted to um, blow away the dust and the debris and start to even maybe you didn't even know what was written about you. But he wanted to start blowing the debris, but also saw our, myself actually partnering with him <laughs> and, and, and clearing the, the like the dirt and the debris. And so I felt the Lord really wanted to, I felt it was also for me, but I just felt it was for, for today that the Lord really wanted to blow on, on things, on promises, on clearing things in your life that have been uh, hidden or, or shelved or that have not come to pass or come to life or, or you've been weary and you just like, oh,
Lord. We trust in you, Lord. We set our eyes on you, Lord. You are the author, perfecter, finish of our faith, God. We believe. We trust in your promises, God. For each and every one of us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're blowing on those promises, God. You are igniting those promises once again in our hearts, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your fire. Thank you, Lord, for your fire. Spirit breakers, break our walls down, break them down. Spirit breakers, help them come down, come down, come down. When, when, when did you get that uh, vision? Um, oh. So just this week. Just this week. That's awesome. Wow. Uh, okay. Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday night. Yep. All right. All right. That's the same night I had the dream. Oh. Same dream. I shared it with Leslie. I shared that same dream with Leslie. I, I actually got the... <clears throat> I actually... And it's meant for this this church, this body. I got the, I got the dream three times. When the Lord gives me a dream three times, I know it's solid. Same words. Same words Jesus used. Come help me clean up the debris in this church. Same words. Are you encouraged that the Lord has chosen prophetically to speak this and you're part of it? <clears throat> Come help me clean the debris up in this church. Same words. And what we started cleaning up was like Oh, man. It, it was really a mess. It was, it was junk everywhere. The walls, uh, it, there was so much rubble in this building. And we got together, and I said, you know, a lot of your faces were in it. I shared it with Leslie. And since she got it Tuesday, that's when I first got it. I said, the Lord's going to continue to give me this. This is him. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so prophetically, I think we're 
at a very interesting place here. So it's important for discernment. It's important for love. It's for, important for us to come shoulder to shoulder because he showed me the whole thing from start to finish. And uh, we, as we clean up, as we clean the church up together, which was a lot of, a lot of, uh, the building I'm talking about, the, the, there were, it, not only was there, was there a lot of debris, it was almost like a, a fire had happened inside. Like there was burnt rubble as well. And it took us some time to get it all cleaned up. But we got it cleaned up. But every once in a while, while we were cleaning up, I'm, I'm just asking the Lord, do I share this part? <clears throat> there was a snake about the length of, not quite the length of that table. It was yellowish. Um... I, it was uh, diamonds, brown, brown diamonds, you know, like a diamond, like four, all through the snake. <clears throat> I'm saying this to you because if you get the dream and you get the same thing, you'll know how to cast this thing out because I know what it is. And while we were working, this thing would pop up every once in a while, not much, but it would jump out every once in a while. And its head was uh, three times the size that a, of a normal head, three or four times the size. But as I said, it was uh, brown diamonds, yellow-ish, and uh, throughout the whole body, and... Um, darker, real, either really dark brown or uh, blackish to outline the diamonds, you know, like that, like that. <clears throat> and we, uh, we cleaned up the church. We cleaned up the church. And everything's cleaned up. And what I found was the Lord said, okay, it was like there was a a square cement block over there. He says, go pick that up, but everything's clean. So I went and I p picked up this big cement block and picked and darned if that didn't think, didn't jump out. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I picked up that big stone or brick and I, and I smashed it. But I couldn't kill it. And it just laughed back at me. A mocking spirit. A mocking spirit that was in the rubble and we cleaned it all up as a Jesus team, but that thing still knew how to hide inside a clean building. I've never, like I, I say, I haven't. And I said, Lord, give me this. I was saying to Leslie, I said, Lord, give me this dream again. I want to make sure this is real. So I got it again. And then you get the same thing? But I don't, you probably can get the. No. And, and I'm not doing this to scare you or freak you. All I'm saying is the enemy has a way to sneak itself in through a mocking spirit, to steal the promises of God. Did not somebody say this morning and while we were praying in regards to keeping, and keeping solid with the promises of God? The mocking spirit is always there to come into your life 
to steal the promises of God from you. And it knows how to hide. Even after you've got yourself cleaned up, it knows how to come back. I thank the Lord that we have people with discernment here. I think we have prophetic eyes. Um, And we're not going to allow that mocking spirit into our homes or around our children or the people that we love because we're going shoulder to shoulder to build a community of believers, but a community in our in, your, in, in whatever area you're from, like Brandon or Sydney or whatever, your homes, but not to allow that mocking spirit in. And if you do, and if, if you do see it in the spirit, I've seen it, come, I, I've seen it come different ways. This is the first time I've seen it come as a snake. But, I, but I'm saying this, I want you to be aware of it. Because you have more power over it. Amen. And, and you may not have brought it into the building. Do you understand? You may not have brought it into the building. It may, found, it may have found its way in or by, by some unclean spirit that walked in and just dropped off because there was a hole in the hedge or whatever it may be. So we need, we, I think it's, it's, it's a warning. I wasn't going to say, but I really believe that that's a warning to the body of Christ to keep your hearts pure. Because it, we had the building cleaned up, clean up the debris. And uh, I, just, I just want you to know that uh, after I... Uh, <laughs> After, after I picked up that big stone thing, and uh, and it and it smashed that, uh, um, it was almost like a, one of those com- uh, cartoons where the wily coyote always gets smashed out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I just want you to know that that uh, that, that snake became a pelt. <laughs> it, it was smashed. It was smashed. And it was no, no longer having any presence. It was dealt with. So when you have to de- if it's in your house, if it's sneaking in, you deal with it by the rock of God. Because it's the mocking spear that always comes in to stri- try to steal your promises that God has given you. And uh, so I, I believe that's a, a word for all of us. And that we stay in a place of continued purity and, and whatever that is and not allow anything to sneak in to steal the promises of God in our life. And once, and once you see it, continue to c- clean the debris out, c- c- continue, continue to, uh, uh, if, if the rock was the word of God, it squashed it. Right? If the mallet was the word of God, it smashed it in your Yeah, I'm, I was just, I'm just saying that prophetically, you know, a um, little different, but kind of the same. I think the Lord's talking to us that it's important for us to stay very clean, very close, and hold on to our promises together and be shoulder to shoulder. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Um, You ready? I, I have an offertory. I, oh, instrumental. Oh, oh, are you going to offer something? No, I have. Oh, I, I have. <laughs> I have my. I, I, I had somebody come up and say, "I, I, I have an offer. I, I want to offer. I want to sing a song." So, come on up and come on up here and. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you want to do an instrumental as well. You want to do an instrumental? Let's do it too. She's going to sing an awesome God. Yeah, yeah.
know where that came from, but I know that I've been um, seeing a lot of things that didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And, and um, my, I guess it's the Lord that comes upon me to try to um, show me, like, don't do this, don't do that. And I'm kind of feeling that I'm just learning um, more in the spirit mm-hmm. than I am in the carnal sense. And I'm starting to realize that there are things that I've been deceived by too. So um, I hear what you're saying and I feel that there are times where I I don't want to listen but he shows me in his voice and through the, the prayer because I pray every day. But I just wanted to share mm. what he's been That's saying to me mm-hmm. to listen to his voice. That's, and not listen That's to very good, Jeff. Any of it. Yeah. And that's good. And, you know, and part of that, you know, as we were talking about, you know, the wickedness of the heart, um, I think it's in Jeremiah somewhere, but um, where, you know, man's heart is, you know, is wicked, yeah. right? Yeah. And so there's wickedness there, but if we line ourselves up according to the Word of God, mm-hmm. that's where our plumb line has to be. It's according to the Word. Yeah. Yes, we pray. We pray. And we listen. And make sure that that voice is, in fact, the voice of the Holy One. And to discern, to discern, you know, and does it line up with Scripture? So, that it's good because the Lord is teaching you. Holy Spirit, He's holy, and we're going to be touching on stuff like that today. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Oh, I think I don't know if we have a guitar for this, but you, but you just lost. How do I play this guitar? Okay. All right. An air one. Do you need? You want me to just play something soft? Yeah, just just play something soft, and we'll we'll go with that. And we'll just put this over here because this will pick it up too. And there, you got two mics and a guitar. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Our God is an awesome God. He re- raised from heaven and earth with wisdom. Down power in love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He raised from heaven and earth with wisdom. Down power in love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He raised from heaven above with wisdom. Down power in love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He raised from heaven on earth with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He raised from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. You uh, got that one down. You got that one down. Yes, and we're going to. Uh, <laughs> and because we serve such an awesome God, I'll, uh, we want to make sure. Yeah, no, Ray, you don't. I'm, I'll let. Uh, uh, bro, move those back. There. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, and because he is such an awesome God, then, um, 
you know, as we've already done, we have worshipped, we have worshipped in song and with our hearts and, 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 and with, with the hearts of worship. We also worship the king who is worthy mm-hmm. with first fruits, you know, and our, our tithes, our offerings, and so on. And so whether it's the basket that's here or in the back, there is a, uh, a debit machine as well that's available, but also online, um, that whomsoever, um, you know, as an act of worship to the king, because he is worthy. It's not because of us and anything that we do. But as part of worshiping him, also advancing his kingdom in the earth, it all works together. So, so yeah, we just uh, we thank you for um, another act of worship. Mm-hmm. It's an it's another act of worship, and the and another act of worship is giving our hearts over to listen to hear what it is that he is saying. So just like Jen was talking about and, and you know, Kimberly was mentioning, it, it is a matter of hearing what is the Sovereign Lord saying. And that's the biggest point. It, you know, Bruce, I mean, Bruce and Cheryl really had no idea what, you know, what I might be going to speak on. And, and the broad stroke is the fear of the Lord. It's the fear of the Lord. Without the fear of the Lord, um, we're hooped. You know, so it's walking in the fear of God because he is holy. He is righteous. And he deserves all our attention and all our praise and all our worship. And that's honoring, to honor him. And so in... um, you know, and even even in the sense of the you know that vision and dream that Cheryl had and was talking about, you know, like the debris, the debris and the stuff, you know, that you know, and the Lord is wanting; He is wanting to blow all that stuff out of the way, and by the power of His Holy Spirit, He can do that in an instant. First of all, we need to submit ourselves to Him. And to and to what he tells us to do, but not only that, it's more important, yeah, that we f- obey and follow what he tells us. But it's more about for who he is, is why we want to obey him. It's not because of any works, but for <coughs> who he is. Then our hearts delight to obey the one who has chosen us for this time, this space, and to walk the earth as as Jesus had walked the earth, only we are much more because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. Then, then there's so many more of us around to, um, to be able to, to do the works that Jesus did and greater. And, you know, I had a, earlier in the, the week, yeah... With concerning the debris and stuff, and it, and I was pondering on on the message, and and there was you know the the bottom of I don't know of all dishwashers, but there's usually some kind of filter in the bottom of your dishwasher, and I just happened to notice after I'd emptied emptied mine, and I thought, well, there's a lot of it's like crumbs and stuff all just kind of spread everywhere, and it was on the bottom, and but in the filter, there's a filter in there, and so I took that filter out, and I thought. Okay, so, but the picture then was was that, okay, so I cleaned the filter and all the stuff was in there, but all this other debris that was scattered, it it's kind of like the centrifuge where it just sends it everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. So if we have not cleaned the filters in our heart, then, and if we have not allowed Holy Spirit, we're talking about the baptism by fire, the fire burns off the dross. The Holy One of Israel, the holiness, is what burns off what is not holy in our lives, if we will submit to His holiness. And so, 
in in Proverbs nine ten, and you know the it's the the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We all want wisdom, but first of all, we need the fear of the Lord in our lives. Every single day, every single moment, every decision that we make, are we making that based on the holiness of our God or on what we think we want to do? So, anyway, so I'm going to, yeah, we're just going to get, uh, yeah, one of the most foolproof things in the whole world to help guard us against sinning and being not pleasing the Lord is, um, it is, it's the fear of the Lord. And so let's just pray, you know, let's just pray a bit together about, you know, we'll just sort of submit all this stuff and, and we'll just say, Lord, we would be still and know that you are the God, the King of heaven and earth. You are King Supreme and in your authority. We think we've got some authority, and, and we do in him, we do. But do we also think we're smarter than him sometimes in our own, that we know better? But no. So Lord God, you are king and supreme in your authority. The ruling, reigning monarch of this universe. You're timeless in your existence, Lord. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Ingenious in your creativity and with totality of ownership. He owns it all. If we will submit to him what we may have stewardship of and be good stewards of what we have, then we're walking in the fear of the Lord. And Lord, we stand in awe of you, and as we contemplate your awesome holiness, your majestic splendor, the blazing glory and limitless power and unquestionable sovereignty, unquestionable sovereignty, So if we were to start to question, why is God doing it this way? Hmm, well, why hasn't he done this yet? He's sovereign. He can jolly well do whatever he wants, when he wants. But we have to submit to his sovereignty and not try to control him. So we worship you for your flawless character. Your flawless character. Lord, your character is flawless. Ours can be strewn with flaws until we come into alignment with his character and allow his character to take us over. Lord, your infinite knowledge and your wisdom, your absolute justice, unswerving faithfulness. You are the God who's unswerving in your faithfulness. Unending mercy. We talked about the mercy. His unending mercy because we all need it. But his mercies are new every morning if we'll grip his mercy. And mercy triumphs over judgment. We bow our hearts and bend our knees before you. Oh, Lord. And we acknowledge your dazzling beauty, your fascinating personality, his personality at work through our personality, or our personality should be at work through his. When we submit, all of us, then we will reflect his. But we stand in awe of his personality and his character. And Lord, we acknowledge that our greatest need is to have a far greater revelation of what you are really like. If we know and get to know better what and who our God really is, then it will be no problem to walk 
in the fear and the reverent awe of a holy God. And we ask you, Lord, to meet that need in us, that we would have that greater revelation. And we'd also join with Moses and we'd pray, teach us your ways, that we may know you and find favor in your sight. We thank you, God, because where the sincere heart prays this, we know he's going to answer, because that's his heart. And in Proverbs 8.13, it says, The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. And what that means is having God's attitude towards sin at all times. The more we study the holiness of God from his word, the more we will understand the extent of his hatred of sin. So in order to understand and comprehend the hatred of sin so that we too can hate sin, the sin of our own lives, that we can hate the, the sin that we can so easily step back into. We study his holiness, and that will reveal how sin really affects the Lord. In fact, God has no tolerance towards sin. He will not compromise with it. Oh, just this little bit, Lord. Just this little bit. If I just do this this once. Well, you know what? I mean, does he love you still? Of course he does. But he won't tolerate and join with you and say, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Because he's a holy God. He cannot and will not tolerate sin in our lives. And sin, it's totally opposite and... and you know, when you really abhor, that, that's, that's his nature. He totally cannot line himself up with sin. In Leviticus 19.2, it says, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. So understanding then what it means to hate sin is of the primary importance in order to fulfill that command. Now, we who have Jesus have already have, you know, Jesus, we've got Yeshua living on, on the inside. We have the fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit is within, and he won't leave us without a way to walk and be holy. It's not something we earn. And because he is a just God, he would never set us a standard without making that full provision for us to be able to accomplish it. Now, if we choose to walk in obedience to that revealed truth, and then the next thing that he tells us to do, his holy life, we begin to see it, his holy life will start to be made manifest through us. There's a little key there, walking in obedience. Mm -hmm. Because if we choose to say, eh, you know, God tells us to do something. And it doesn't have to be hard at all. It might just to be, it might just be to, to, you know, to wave at somebody. It might be a simple smile. It might be, to buy someone, you know, a bit of grocery. It might be that. But we say, oh, not today, Lord, I don't have time. But you know what? That's an act of disobedience. That's a willful act of disobedience. Mm -hmm. We have chosen, we've made a decision not to obey the Lord. So if that's the case, then we are not walking in the fear of the Lord. Because... 
of who he is. We will honor him, and we delight in honoring him by doing what he asks us to do. And then in Malachi chapter 2 and verse 5, the Lord is making reverence, reference rather to Levi, that, the priest. And he says, My covenant with him was a covenant of life and peace. And I gave them to him, that he might fear, and he feared me. He stood in awe of my name. He stood in awe of my name. And what is it about his name? The Lord's most dynamic and his own description of himself, two-word description of who he is. It's from Exodus 3.14. I am. Amen. I am. Which means he is absolutely everything that is perfect, excellent, complete, and flawless. Everything we will ever need him to be to fulfill us. He is, he is that. Amen. He is I am. Amen. Everything that we will ever need for him to work in us in order to uh, conform to the image of, of Jesus is in us. I am. And everything that we will ever need to work through us to make him known to others he is I am. And he enables us to do that. So you know as when Ray alluded to the when we were at the um, the celebration of life yesterday for young Xander. And as we sat there, we were, you know, the the community hall in Carberry has a, another tier, another level, you know, for seating. And, and we were up there, and the place was so packed. But just waiting for the whole, the service to start, oh, my gosh, it was it was very difficult, especially as an intercessor sitting there. It was so difficult. And the Lord brought to my attention the fear of the Lord. It, 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 it's so difficult to sit. And you, you're picking up all the, the sorrow, the grief, the hopelessness, the despair, everything that's going on with the people in the room and beyond and in the community. And it's like, Lord. I mean, I had to hand that back to him. Because I cannot possibly in my own strength, and we don't, we're not to do anything in our own strength. Say, Lord, I pass this burden. But Lord, how on earth? Well, He's not on earth, except in us. But, but the the thing is, that's one small segment of the total population of the globe. One small segment. And if that's such a great need in just a small town or one building, how much greater the need in the rest of the world? So then, if we really, I'm going to come to, I'll, I'll catch up to myself in a minute. Um, but because of who he is, an all-sufficient God, we can put our trust and our faith in him. I guess I should look at my notes every now and then. Um, yeah. There's various different dimensions of the fear of the Lord. And in Psalm 33, 8 and 9, it gives us another dimension, and that's, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood forth. 
lot of power there. So let all the earth fear the Lord. So, so then that can be a prayer offered back to him, even in the midst of a very hurting world. Lord, let all the earth fear you. Let all the inhabitants of the whole world and in this community and for the people that were there yesterday stand in awe of you. Let that be. Let that be. Lord, you spoke and it came to be. So, Father, we speak in the name of Yeshua and it should come to be. You commanded. He commanded and it stood forth. So all of that means for us as these humans here, we are to stop and consider with awe and wonder. The limitless power, the supreme authority of one who by his spoken words brought this whole universe into being. Hebrews 1.3 tells us that by that same word of power, the universe is being upheld. Like, that's a lot of power. More than that, 2 Peter 3.7 says, and but, the same, but by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist have been stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. There's that word fire again. Because fire, the purity that comes with the holy fire. But there's also a judgment that can be attached to a fire in the destruction for the ungodly. So then the fear of the Lord should produce in us that same attitude towards sin that God has, which is to hate it. And also to give us a very deep respect and an understanding of the holiness of our God, the power of God and the sufficiency of God to meet man's need. As believers, no matter what, where we gather together, we all need to take God a lot more seriously. How many times have you been in, in circles or in places where, eh, you know, God's full of grace, you know, and he is, it's true, but we do need, need to take seriously this holy one that we serve. Because there's a, something of a sense of spiritual healthiness be afraid of God. Like when Jesus said in Matthew 10, 26 and 27, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will be not, I'm sorry, that will not be known. So we need to be attentive to what we keep hidden from others, from ourselves, or what we think we can keep hidden from the Lord. Because what we might say in the dark, or utter in the light, what we hear whispered, hmm, would that be gossip? What we hear whispered, proclaim upon the housetops, nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. When people treat God like or often less than other human beings even, where human beings or those that are leading a cause or whatever the case may be are exalted more, you hear more about that than you do about how how we treat God, then that would indicate there's no real understanding 
of the fear of the Lord upon them. The more we really get to know God, the more we understand we really don't want to mess with him. Nope, we don't. Because the Bible has proven and continues to prove that when God really puts his holiness and glory on display, as in a real genuine revival, death can be that penalty among the church folk or the believers for lying and for being disobedient to Holy Spirit. We read about that with Ananias and Sapphira in Acts 5, verses 1 to 10. This can affect both Christians and non-Christians alike. And verse 11 says, And then great fear came upon the whole church, upon all those who believed, and upon all who heard these things. Oh, that the fear of the Lord would take precedence in our lives. Yeah, those guys that were right present there, they were kind of scared spitless. Yeah. They might not have come inside that gathering place, but boy, they were the fear of the Lord. It was like, oh, 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 we better not mess with this one. And then we've got Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. Brock, would you like to read that, please? Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. If you would like to, sure. I don't mind you being here. And I guess people will hear you better that way. Thus says Yahweh, Let not a wise man boast in his wisdom, and let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not a rich man boast in his riches, but let him who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am Yahweh, who shows loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For I delight in these things, declares Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. So from that we see what the um, three main attributes when we when we've got when we have the knowledge of God three main attributes highlighted are the steadfast love, justice, and righteousness. We touched on, you know, obedience, walking in obedience to God because the fear of the Lord is directly connected to obedience and it's because of who he is. We touched on that, who he is. I might have had a trip up on my word, but whatever. Anyway, um, we know the story about Jonah, his obedience or disobedience. And heaven only knows, Ray's talked about this enough times, he's had the kids and go fishing and, and all that kind of stuff. So the, the story in Jonah there, and we've got that, it's Jonah 1 verse 9, predominantly there. So Jonah, you know, he's on this boat, 
and there's a heck of a storm brood. And the mariners, the ones that are with him on, the, on, on this ship, asked Jonah what his occupation was. What, is, what do you do for a living? And where did you come from? And what was your nationality? You know, get to know somebody, right? And Jonah replied, I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Jonah 1.9. I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven. So he's saying all the right things, right? He is a Hebrew, that's true. And uh, he does know the Lord. He's sent by God for a purpose. However, there seems to be a lack of the fear of the Lord, as we see right away. His disobedience to God in not going into that city of Nineveh with the word of the Lord, as he was given to do, and by his deliberately going in another direction. So, how many of us in here, and I would venture to say every single one of us at one point or another, or maybe, you know, maybe it's still something you're working through, um, but the Lord tells us to do something, and we choose not to do that. In fact, we say, nah. No, I'm, I'm going to go over to this city. Not real pleasing to the Lord, but it also shows the lack of the fear of the Lord at work in us. So those mariners that were with them, they, 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 real, they had a real fear of the Lord by what, how their reactions were to Jonah's testimony and the disobedience. And then the terrible storm that really took place because of Jonah's disobedience. So you have storms in your life, you have things that you wonder, why the heck does this de- yeah. keep happening? Yeah. Why is this still here? Well, why, can't, why isn't this working out? Well, where's the last place the Lord told you to be obedient and, and to do something? And you chose to ignore it? Or make an excuse? So these mariners, God bless them, before throwing Jonah overboard (coughs) at his own (coughs) suggestion, (laughs) they cried to the Lord, Oh God, because they're on this boat too, right? Let us not perish for this man's life and lay not on us innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. They saw through the stuff. They saw through Jonah's front. So then after that, the sea became immediately calm. And these men feared the Lord even more. Because they saw the power of an awesome God at work. So dear old Jonah, he had to learn a lot of things the hard way. Through a whole series of horrifying experiences that the consequences of disobedience were always far harder than the act of obedience, no matter how hard that even seemed to be. But you know, our God is a God full of grace, and and God's grace has been given to enable us to obey. We just have to make the decision in our head that we'll do it, and in our heart. I choose to trust you, Lord, no matter what this looks like. And in Psalm 130, verses 3 and 4, you know, we, because of repentance, it's such a gift that God has given us that we can repent and say, oh, Lord, I really messed up. Then we can experience that truth in Psalm 130, verses 3 and 4. It says, if you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. So forgiveness, he's always has, forgiveness is available to us. And that fear of God is evidenced in our lives by instant, joyful, and whole obedience to God. That's the biblical obedience. Anything else is disobedience. You know, you've got to call it like it is, right? Mm -hmm. 
delayed obedience is disobedience. Mm -hmm. Partial obedience is disobedience. Yep. Well, that should be good enough. Oh, no. That's still disobedience. Still doing it the way you want to do it, not the way the Lord has asked you to do it. Doing what God has asked with murmuring is disobedience. Whoa, how about that one? That's a, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, how many, and I mean, again, you know, been guilty for heaven's sakes. But praise God for the fear of the Lord that has been growing in my life. So I catch it a lot quicker. touch on this before and it's, I think that's a good one to kind of hammer a little bit but the Lord he wants to he wants to bring us to that place where what he tells us to do is not quite and nearly so important as who he is who gives the order will we honor him when we put the emphasis on the what and not on the who then we have things in wrong perspective. So how many, you know, how many, you know, we've, I think we've all probably been there, done that, doing that, whatever. But, well, I did this for God. Well, that's nice. But if the emphasis is on that what, instead of on the who, then our perspective gets skewed. You know, and having some things in perspective, Jesus, when he was on the earth, he uh, he never placed any more importance on raising the dead than blessing a child. And he certainly didn't start any denomination on either one of those events. Yeah. yeah. Right? How many how many times has that happened? You know, like hmm. um, we are the church of raising the dead. Well, so we should be, but that's not the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> we'll bless the children. God tests us by telling us to do things without our having the faintest idea why. Why are we to do them? We might be curious and we might want to know, but he can either tell us or not. We do not need to understand the why. We need to understand who he is. Who is speaking? He, God, in his infinite knowledge and wisdom, knows why and that is good enough reason for us with our finite knowledge and wisdom to obey And when we really, truly, genuinely fear the Lord, we will obey him instantly. We're not going to argue about it in our heads. Yeah. Instantly. Once we really grasp having the fear of the Lord. We will obey him instantly, hopefully, and joyfully. Because of who he is. When we can become unimpressed with man's reactions to our actions and only impressed with God's reactions to our actions, then we walk in the fear of the Lord. But how many of us base our reactions on the actions or the, our actions on the reactions of others? When really our actions need to be based on the reaction or our reactions need to be based on the action but that communication 
with the Lord. So, yep, not allowing the fear of man to be greater than the fear of the Lord in our lives. And in Proverbs 29, 25, it says, um, you know, that uh, the fear of man, it brings a snare to our lives. That fear of man, as we already mentioned, is being more impressed with man's reaction to our actions than with God's reaction. That's bondage. Then we get bound up. Get bound up in the fear of man or the fear of many things. But we get bound up. So even, like, he's the one who breaks our chains. Maybe a little, just even just a little help, like a helpful hint, if we can remember, is um, okay. So you know, somebody tells you what they think and what they're, you know, what they're thinking about this and what they think about that, and their impression about this or that. Oh, that's nice, but you know, so I, I've heard what I've heard. You know, Ralph, I'm, I'll just use you as Ralph might tell me what he thinks about a certain situation and how things went, or. The, you know, in the source of the, you know, what's going on in any particular event. So I've heard what he's, what he thinks, but now my check-in is, what do you think? Amen. I've heard what you think. You've let me know what you think. But Lord, what do you think? It really doesn't matter what any one of us thinks if it doesn't line up with what he thinks. Amen and his holiness, and his ways. So the more, the more concern that we have for God's approval in every situation, then the more confidence he releases to us to act with his authority. It might just test us in our sincerity and, and the in that area of the fear of people versus the fear of the Lord. Be ready for your test. But it's not because of a harshness. It's because he loves us Amen. and helps us to become more and more like him. trying to jump through some stuff. Mm -hmm. In Jeremiah chapter 6 and in verse 10, to whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? You know, it's kind of like the, the dreams, the vision, like there's a warning Behold, their ears are closed, they cannot listen. Behold, the word of the Lord is to them an object of scorn. They take no pleasure in it. So how are we responding to the word of the Lord? Verse 19 says, Hear, O earth, behold, I am bringing evil upon this people, the fruit of their devices, because they have not given heed to my words, and as for my law, they have rejected it. Now, the unbelievers for sure. But what about us, you know, what things are, are not going right for us because we've rejected what the Lord has instructed us? There's so much, but there's only a certain amount that we can all, but I think we get the, you know, we get the idea about how important the importance of the holiness of God. It 
this morning I had a whole bunch of stuff running through my head of all my own little examples and of course now they're blank 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 um, In Matthew 12, verses 36 and 37. But I say to you that for every idle word men speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So what are we speaking? Are we speaking the whole truth? Nothing but the truth, so help us God. <laughs> or, you know, are we are we speaking little parts of truth? Maybe not quite telling the whole story. We choose to leave out some or add more. But then it's not the truth, real truth. Yeah. Well, let's just... Cheryl, do you want to find Psalm 34, verses 11 to 13, please? Come on up. Please. It says, Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. That's it, right? Okay. Sure. And if there's anything else that catches your eye, go for it. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. There you go. And that's it. I mean, that's an instruction. You know, that's an instruction God gives us. Are we going to pay attention to that or are we going to ignore it? So we already, you know, it was spoken, I think, when even we were praying before service and even in the, but truth, speak only truth. That truth, only truth is spoken. So one of those lessons in the fear of the Lord is having, you know, our lips free from deceit. And the Lord has a lot to say in his word about the sin of deceit. Yeah. Deceit manifests itself in overstatement or understatement. By adding a few words or leaving a few words out, we can distort the truth, just like what we were talking about. And in failing to report the setting or the context in which the words were spoken, we can give a distortion of the truth. Amen. How many times has, have we found out later, well... That's really not what the whole context or things are taken out of context. Yeah. You know, and somebody might say, well, you know, I don't know. I heard this said about this or that. But what was the context surrounding it? And even in the word of God, you know. Um, so truth can be distorted. And we must be very careful that we are not ones to distort that truth. I was just going to say the devil did that with Jesus when he was testing him. Right. He used the word again. Yep, exactly right. That's right, and it, but it was twisted and distorted. And in Revelation 14, 5, and it says, And in their mouth was found no deceit, for they were without fault before the throne of God. How is that possible? We walk in the fear of a holy God. We come before him. And the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and in those who hope in his mercy. Mm -hmm. Psalm 147.11 The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him and he makes known to them his covenant. Amen. Psalm 25.14 so every single time that we choose to fear God and not men, we can rest assured that we have brought God pleasure. We have pleased our Father. 
and he will bring us into a closer fellowship with himself. He will reveal his secrets from his word to us. So we want to know more. Let's just pull in close to him, the truth and the holy God. So to that degree that we choose to live in submission, availability, dependence, obedience, and faith to the Lord Jesus, he will release his authority to us in the same way the Father did to the Son. And I think we'll call that for now. Yamasa tati hasete hakiasa. He alamosari hasari asai. So just, let's just take a minute. You know, take a minute before the Lord and ask Him to do a check like, Holy Spirit, where have I, where have I not walked? according to the fear of the Lord. What can you show me? Take a minute. Let's just ask the Lord to show, because he will. He doesn't want you tied up and bound in other fear, but to be free to walk in the fear of the Lord. Holy Spirit is so gentle to bring conviction to us. It's not a harsh taskmaster. And if we pay attention, he'll, he'll show us. And then we just ask, ask, Lord, forgive me. For now I know what I have done. It's not, <laughs> for I know not what I've done, but I, I, now I know what I have done, Lord. not trusting God. So whatever it is the Lord has shown you, and I'm sure, you know, you, you know, I, I even think way back when, um, when I worked many moons ago, um, and I first accepted the Lord, but working in the um, emergency department at the Brandon General, it was the General back then, um, you know, as nurses, there's nothing to, you know, I mean, you might, you might t truly forget, but, you know, especially emerge, you got things in your pockets, like you're putting, you know, the tape and scissors, and you got, you know, and pens and wherever else, and, but, before I met the Lord, eh, they got lots, I'll just stick that, that roll of tape, you know, it'll be handy at home. I'll stick that roll of tape. But by gum, you know, after I accepted the Lord, it was interesting that he caught me on that like right quick, very quickly. And I, and I thought, oh, so I won't ever do that again. And not that he, he didn't make it a public display or anything. It was just him very gently talking to me. You know that is stealing. That's stealing. Oh, it's still their property. It's not. It's not mine. So there was a few rolls of tape I ended up bringing back because they didn't. <laughs> at that time, they didn't. You know, there was no worry about single use or anything. You know, just throw it in the pile. Um, but little things like that, or or not telling the parents, you know, like what your part might have been. You know because it would go better for you if they didn't know what I did. 
then I would benefit from that. But eventually the truth comes out. There's always consequences, right? So, so whatever, however little it is or however big it is, it doesn't matter. If we will obey the Lord, walk in his ways because of who he is, and we delight, we delight in doing what he asks us. He never really is harsh in demands unless we unless he has to get a little stronger because we've disobeyed. Like, listen here, I did tell you to do that. Mm-hmm, you did. Yeah. Then I won't be. But but really he is such a gentle and gracious and merciful God. And for us, you know, if we if we tend to, you know, some of our the nature or human nature start picking apart somebody you know and uh, see the way they did that uh, they really messed that up let's look back and take our eyes off the other people pointing fingers pulling them apart and focus on the one true holy God and when we start to focus on him and what he thinks we may have our opinions but for us to pass judgment and criticism that brothers and sisters or those who are in leadership anywhere whether it's in the country or in in the church circles wherever it is and heaven only knows we have Lots to pray for, for our government and various things, but um, it's easy to get caught up in that. But the Lord's not impressed with that. He is not impressed with what we think. He's only, he wants us, he says, pray. Pray for those who are in leadership over you, whether it's in your local fellowship, whether it's in the government of the church, whether it's in the school system, but pray for those. Because you point a finger one way and there's all those ones pointing back at you. So, Father God, we just want to thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. I thank you, Lord, that you, you continue, Holy Spirit, to reveal those places in our lives where, where we have not obeyed you at that last thing or where we've only partially obeyed and Lord that we will that we that as you just bring that to mind father that we will go back to that place where you first told us and we will now obey we make that our heart and head attitude and decision I choose to trust you Lord no matter what that outcome is And I choose to follow and trust you. To obey you because of who you are. A great and mighty God. So Lord bless your people. Your sons, your daughters, the little ones and the big ones alike. Because we all need to come as children. Before a holy father. And to honor him. And make him known everywhere we go by honoring him and honoring one another. Thank you, Lord. Blessings. Till next week.